In this video, we're going to be having a look at replacing the cylinder, sometimes called the barrel, on a Ingersoll SC71 or SC73 type night latch. And this is what you're gonna to need to carry out this job. Obviously your replacement cylinder, um, which you can order from our website, ingersolllocks.co.uk, um, and you'll be guaranteed a genuine product um, on the internet. You might find them cheaper, uh, but they may or may not be genuine or may be inferior quality. You're gonna need a pair of pliers, you're going to need a small screwdriver, about three millimetres, roughly three and a half millimetre flat screwdriver. You might need a posi drive number two screwdriver, but probably not. And a larger flat screwdriver, that one's about five or six millimetres. And a hacksaw, this one's a junior hacksaw, or you can use a full size hacksaw. This is what the cylinder typically looks like on the door. Um, this one hasn't got an optional cylinder pull fitted. Um, which also is another accessory. I'll put a link to that video now that you might want to um, think about including on the door in case you don't have one. In my left hand here, we have uh, an older cylinder. These are essentially the same cylinder. This one in my hand uh, is older, and you'll see it's got the word Ingersoll embossed across the top, um, and they stopped that uh, embossing of the name across the top of the cylinder a few years ago. So the one fitted to this little mini door here is a newer cylinder. So the first thing we're going to look at is uh, removing the lock case from the door. So now we're going to open the uh, open the little door, so open the lock, and we're going to remove the three wood screws that are holding the lock case to the door. So we've removed those screws and here they are. And these are the screws that I was referring to that might be flathead or might be a posi drive number two. Also important to note is that the later locks have got three wood screw holes here and the earlier locks have only got two. They'll just have one here and one there. Apart from that third hole, that's the only material difference um, in the lock cases. The lock is still fixed to the door with these two screws that people often miss. There's one here and there's one there. And they're quite long screws that go all the way through the lock case to the end here. We're gonna unscrew one and show you. Okay, so we're now gonna undo the top of those two screws. And that's where we use the smaller of the flat screwdrivers. And it only takes a few turns before the thread is disengaged. And you'll see now, no matter how many times we turn, that's not coming out any further. And this is where the pliers are gonna be used. But before we do, the screw isn't quite uh, protruding far enough to grab a hold of it with the pliers. Sometimes it will be out further than that. But in this case, we're going to use that screwdriver that we used to just persuade the head of the screw a little bit further out so that we can now grip it with the pliers. And as you'll see, we'll just gently, and it shouldn't be any resistance, pull that screw out. And now you can see what I mean, that it's a long screw with a small thread at one end and your slot at the far end there. So we've loosened off the bottom screw now, and the thing to watch out for now is when you take that screw out is that the lock case itself may be stuck to the door with paint or varnish or something, or it might be loose like this one, and it could actually fall at this point. This one is fitted well, so it's quite tight, so removing it is, um, is necessary, it won't drop. So with the lock case removed from the door, and here it is, we're looking at the the back plate or the fixing plate. Um, and these four black screws are the screws that bolt through and hold the cylinder in place. And there's the four internally threaded uh, threads where, where the screws engage. This back plate has been uh, installed correctly. The, this screw here where my thumbnail is and the one below is just a little small wood screw that's there to hold the back plate in position when you remove the four cylinder screws. If you just see a hole here and no screw, just pop a screw, a couple of screws in there. Um, you're looking at uh, probably a um, number seven screw by about three quarters of an inch will do the job just to hold it. And these are uh, dome screws. It can be a small countersunk screw as long as it doesn't get in the way um, of that little hole there for the rod to go through um, and the lock case to go on, you'll be fine. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove those four cylinder fixing screws. So I'll show you one screw being removed and then we'll cut to all four having been removed. So 
all four screws are now removed. And now you can see what I mean. These two screws remaining in the, in the fixing plate are holding this plate to the door. Otherwise, it would drop to the floor. There are the screws. These screws have been cut down in length. We're going to talk about that in a minute. That's to do with the thickness of the door. Um, but now we are looking at the uh, connecting bar of the cylinder. And with the door open, sometimes that cylinder will be a bit uh, stuck to the door. It might be paint or it might be varnish and it won't just pull out like this one. And what we do in those circumstances, just a little tap with the back of the screwdriver onto the connecting bar and the cylinder is released. And that was just a bit of varnish that was holding it really. At this point, we'll take the old keys. I mean, this is a new one, but we'll take the old keys, pop them in the cylinder so we don't get confused with keys. That's the old cylinder, set that to one side. And then we're gonna grab our new cylinder. And as you can see, the connecting bar on the new cylinder here is much longer than the cylinder connecting bar that we just removed from the door. Now that's to do with the thickness of the door. This particular door is 44 millimeters, which is a standard thickness in the UK for a front door. But even at a standard thickness, you're still going to need to cut the bar down um, uh, in order to match the uh, thickness of the door. And we'll show you how to do that shortly. Okay, so the next stage is to take your new cylinder and we're gonna fit that into the door. But before we do, to make sure we've got the orientation of the cylinder correct, because it has to be correct, we're going to put our keys in and we're gonna put the key in halfway and that will uh, remind us of where the key is in its unlocked position. And now we insert the cylinder in the door. Okay, so now we need to um, put the four screws back and fasten the cylinder back into the door. The new cylinder will probably come with four screws, it should do. Um, and you'll see these screws that it comes with are oversized. Um, let me just get one out. So I've got uh, one out of the packet here. So you'll see it's got a, a, a natural point for cutting. So this screw started its life as long as this screw. And with a hacksaw, very carefully, it's been cut down there. That's the hacksaw there. Um, but in this circumstances, if when you took the screws out, when you unwound them from the cylinder, they came out very cleanly and they weren't stiff or cross-threaded, you're totally good just to put these old screws back and you don't need to get involved in cutting the new screws. So we'll just show you that now. So whilst holding the cylinder into the door, because it will want to fall out at this point, insert one of the screws and just turn it with your fingertips just to get the thread started and turn with the screwdriver and you're looking for it to go in nice and easily. If it feels cross-threaded, and it's stiff, it probably is cross-threaded. Take it out and gently start again. Find that uh, thread properly and engage it. And then we'll put these screws back now. So once all four screws are in, then you wanna go around and pinch them all up. You can let go of the cylinder at this point. It's, it's in there and you've got it firmly fixed. Tighten those up, don't go crazy, but they need to be reasonably tight, as you see here. If you are fitting the optional cylinder door pull, um, then some additional information um, follows. So the cylinder pull would go on like that, and then the cylinder would go through it, and it's the cylinder connecting screws that will hold the cylinder in place, and by virtue of that, they'll hold the uh, cylinder door pull in place. As you can see, that's now fitted with the door pull. Very useful feature for pulling the door shut. So with the cylinder door pull fitted on the other side now, these uh, screws that we removed will be too short at this point. They won't engage because of the extra thickness of that door pull. At this point, you're going to need to, to use the screws that come with the new cylinder, the longer screws. Or you can order these as a spare part on our website if you're retrospectively fitting um, a cylinder pull to an existing lock and you'll need to cut them down and probably it won't be on that or definitely it won't be on that uh, pre-mark notch. It's gonna be, you'll need the screw to be a bit longer so you'll be cutting it on the thread. You need to do that very steadily and carefully and not have it leave any rough edges or it won't want to engage in the internal thread on the cylinder. So I've got the cylinder mounted in the door 
Um, and now we can see that the connecting bar is too long. You can see that the, the lock case is it's just almost as deep as the lock case. So that's going to need to be cut down. And we'll just offer up the old tenant that we took off so that you can see how much shorter that one is compared to the new one. That's the new one down there. And that's the old one that's been cut down. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, we had that key just half in. We need to now push the key in all the way and rotate the key so that the connecting bar is now flat facing you. So now with the connecting bar laying flat like this, it's much easier to cut. And you'll notice that you've got some uh, guide marks on where to cut. And we're looking at that guide mark here, which is the second one that's outside of the of the uh, fixing plate. And we want to mark that. And if you're interested in measurements, that is round about 12 to 13 millimeters or half an inch from the face here of the uh, fixing plate. And you're going to need to cut that. So now the actual cutting. So with the cylinder fixed into, into the door, it makes it much easier. It's holding it steady for you. With your pliers, grip firmly on the end there. And then you're going to take your hacksaw and get the right angle. And we're going to cut on that second notch. Doesn't take a lot of effort. Don't push too hard. Just let the saw do the work. And you can see at that point, you. You're not all the way through, but you can just fatigue it with the, with the uh, pliers and up and down a bit, and it will snap off like that. So now the cylinder is installed. Um, the next thing to do is to remove the key. So you want to just rotate that back up to the 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock position. Withdraw the key. And now we're going to mount the lock case back on the door. And then the next thing we need to do, because this is the SC71 lock and the RA71 lock case, is we need to put it in the double locked position before we fit it back on the door. And we're just going to show you that now. So we just take the screwdriver, turn it to the position where the bolt is out, and we'll be now ready to fit it back on the door. If this had been an RA73, a, a non-double locking version, you wouldn't have had to have done that last operation. You just put it back on the on the door with the bolt um, withdrawn into the lock case. So putting the lock case um, back onto the door can be a tiny bit fiddly, and it's only because the connecting bar dangles down a bit, um, and that will need just to be lifted up. With, I mean, not, not like this um, Without the lock case there, we're going to show you this operation, but you can't see that bit And um, while we've got the lock case going on. We're going to show you that. So now we're going to do it for real, and we're going to put the lock case back on the door. And my colleague's got the screwdriver. He's just going to persuade the connecting bar into the cam follower, which can be tricky even for experienced locksmiths. But there you are. He's got it. He's done it lots of times. And now the lock case is on the door. So now while holding the lock case, um, with his thumb into the door, we're going to insert the two long screws. What that's going to do is allow you to free up one hand because the uh, the lock is the lock case is now firmly on the door. Now we're just going to do those two screws up. Sometimes you need to give a little bit of a push on the back of the screwdriver because sometimes the tip of that screw, the thread, won't engage without that little bit of a push on the back of the screwdriver. I think we missed that. We'll just do that one more time. Just to make that you don't always have to do it if you start turning the screw and it's it's going in then then you've got it it's fine we're going to pop the three wood screws back in so then they're in there now so we've got the lock oh the door open um, but the lock is double locked so we now need to put the key in into the cylinder and we're going to undouble lock it and once we've undouble locked it, the lock is now reset and ready for use. And we'll just shut the door and show you. And there you are. And that's it. You have successfully changed your cylinder. And with the key inserted in the cylinder, even if you pull it out halfway, it's been designed in such a way that this hole is always at the bottom and that the keys will, or your key ring will dangle from it like that. The next thing we need to do is just test it with the door open to make sure it works. So as you can see, we simulate the lock being locked, pop our key in, and we can unlock it. 
and also we can double lock it because it's an SC71 and that bolt will remain out, meaning that the handle cannot be pulled open. So all of the parts that we've looked at can be purchased on our website, uh, ingersollocks.co.uk. So you can buy a new cylinder, you can buy extra keys, you can buy your replacement lock case, you can buy those connecting screws, even these, um, these long screws here. If you've lost them, you can also order those. You can buy your cylinder pull and your strike plate, any of the bits uh, needed to uh, keep your SC71 in tip-top condition.